This is the world's largest RC Magnus Effect aircraft. A huge project that's taken me months of work just to see if we can get it to actually fly using these strange spinning rotors to create lift. The Magnus Effect is where a spinning object redirects oncoming air. As the spinning object moves through the air, it drags air around it and redirects it, creating a pushing force. A while ago, I had a go at building a plane that used this principle to fly, but it didn't fly all that well. Since then, I've always wondered how to build a much better Magnus Effect aircraft and whether making it larger might make it fly better. So this was the challenge, to successfully build the world's largest RC Magnus Effect aeroplane. And the first problem was deciding exactly where to start. The starting point for this project is going to be using a tiny little RC plane to test out the rotor system and to see whether we can actually make something fly with this new type of strange rotor. To get our small RC plane flying with the Magnus Effect, the Magnus Effect wing would need to create enough lift to overcome the plane's weight. So with a bit of balsa wood, I could start putting together some basic Magnus Effect wings, and straight away I could see that it was actually starting to create a bit of lift. Whee! Giving it some backspin, Whoa. it didn't just drop straight down. <laughs> Instead, it moved forwards on its own. Now it was time to put this wing on top of the RC plane and take it outside for a first test flight. So we want a bit of a headwind. Yeah, I don't know if these are actually gonna spin. At this point, I really had a lot of unknowns about the design of this rotor. If these don't spin, it's not gonna create any lift. We'll see. <laughs> I'm not very confident, as you can tell. Okay, ready? Yep. Three, two, one, go! I think the, the, they just didn't go round, the uh, <laughs> rotary wing. After some iterations, I came up with a much better design of spinning rotor, with multiple sections to better balance the wing as it span. Most importantly, I made the spinning part much smoother, so it could rotate more freely. Oh yes! Look at that! It's working! Woo. Now we just needed to keep flying it and crashing it to learn as much as possible, as quickly as possible. Wow! <laughs> oh my Is god! Is it okay? <laughs> no. Now the problem was how to build a more optimised aircraft from scratch. This next plane would be bigger, better and hopefully fly more effectively. Making the right design choices at this stage would be critical for its success. I started with the fuselage, keeping it lightweight but strong. I used foam board for the structure, cutting and shaping it into a simple box structure that could be glued together. Next I added strong carbon fibre tubes from Easy Composites, which would act as secure mounting points for the motors. Next up was the tail, and again this was just made from bits of foam board. For control, I cut out the control surfaces and installed three servos, two for the elevators and one to control the rudder. With the fuselage and tail complete, it was now time for the tricky bit, the rotating wing. This would be around three times larger than the balsa wood prototype, meaning it would have to handle much greater forces. It needed to be perfectly straight, incredibly strong and able to rotate as smoothly as possible. To achieve this, I used another carbon tube, this time mounted on precision bearings to keep friction to a minimum. These bearings were mounted to the fuselage using some 3D printed custom parts, with the bearings being squeezed into position using a vise. Now came the most important steps, cutting out the circular wing fences. The wing fences would help to keep the air trapped over each wing panel, improving lift and efficiency. I carefully measured and cut them to be as precise as possible, and then glued everything into place. Slowly but surely, the aircraft was starting to take shape, and it was all looking pretty good. I had some concerns about how accurately everything was built, but at the end of the day, this was still just a prototype. Right, now we actually have the Magnus Effect aeroplane pretty much done. Now I just need to wait for a few days for some good weather to come around and then we can see whether this thing actually works in this configuration. Now with a rare spell of half decent February weather, it was time for the plane's maiden flight. There we go. She's going. So obviously the configuration of this aircraft has changed quite drastically uh, from the last version. So yeah, this aeroplane has got a better ratio of lift to weight, um, but that doesn't guarantee it'll actually work. We're gonna need to run towards the breeze. So I think if we go up here. This would be a crucial test to see if the forces were balanced correctly. Had we got the right amount of thrust to drag and lift to weight? <laughs> goes. 
goes. <laughs> it's working. Right, gonna get it coming around the field. Oh, right, I'm getting, finding it a bit difficult to control. I think some of these controls need tweaking slightly. <laughs> All right, power on a bit more. It quickly became clear that the plane was a bit underpowered. We're having quite a lot of uh, nose up on the attitude, but uh, things are seeming to go all right at the moment. Seems a little underpowered. I think we need a bit more power on the, on the engines. I'm losing altitude in the turns. I'm using the rudder quite a lot to coordinate the turns. Oh! Right, let's level out. Look at that! <laughs> uh oh! Oh no! <laughs> I think we're flying in ground effect slightly. The spinning rotors were creating a huge amount of drag. It was just about staying in the air, but only just. Watch out, Emma! Oh my goodness! Woohoo! <laughs> Right, I think I'll land it there. <laughs> yes, high five. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just wipe your nose? <laughs> Gross. Oh, we've broken one of the motors off. Or is it, oh, has that just got really hot and melted off? Oh yes, something oh. smells burning. So maybe we've, we've over revved these motors slightly. So that's one thing we need to change is the power system. It wasn't providing enough power and then it melted off the aeroplane. That's not generally a good thing for, uh, for your airliner. To improve performance, we really needed some more power. If we could just fit some more powerful motors, that should make a massive difference. And this would be the next challenge. We had discovered that the plane had an enormous amount of drag, so the next step was to upgrade the plane with much more powerful electronics, which should help to give us more thrust to balance this out. So I swapped out the two small drone motors for two twin electric ducted fans, which were far more powerful and provided much more thrust. Ah, oh, blue sky. Look at that. That's a rare sight in February. With this upgrade, the aircraft's speed should increase. But as with all things in engineering, there was a trade-off. The new power system was heavier. This meant that the plane now had more thrust, but effectively had less lift to keep it in the air. From the moment it took off, the extra power was noticeable. The plane had far more thrust than before and could climb more aggressively. But there was a problem. It wasn't coping well with the wind at all. So we've got a bit more turbulence today at, at this point. So uh, really fighting the breeze. Ah! Also, to make matters worse, the added weight meant that stalls were much sharper and more aggressive. And then came one of the most nerve-wracking moments of the project so far. On one particularly windy flight, the plane climbed beautifully up into the wind, only suddenly to be blown across the sun. Uh-oh. 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 Oh, it's upside down. It looks like the nose is has exploded. I don't think this would be very survivable for the pilot. We'd learned something really important. We had reached the weight limit of this aeroplane. We needed to increase the plane's lift. There were a few different ways to increase the lift of the Magnus Effect rotors, but one idea stood out. What if we powered the wing directly? Instead of relying on airflow to spin the rotors passively, we could force the rotors to rotate using a motor. If this worked, it could massively increase the lift and help to counteract the extra weight. To test the idea, I needed to build a custom mechanism, and this meant designing and assembling a system of a powerful brushless motor, a belt drive, and a set of 3D printed pulleys to transfer power to the carbon axle. Well, it seems quite promising. But would it still work when fitted with the Magnus Effect wings? At first, it seemed to be spinning well, and things were looking positive. But of course, things can't be that straightforward. We discovered the rotors would create nasty vibrations at certain RPM ranges. If we couldn't run the motor fast enough, we wouldn't be able to produce enough lift to offset the weight of the entire motorised system, let alone the rest of the aeroplane. So it was time for another sketchy test flight. We've got the same power system in terms of the uh, two twin EDFs on the back, but uh, now we are going to be testing our powered rotors, uh, powered by the electric motor in here, uh, and this belt system. 
So yeah, the, uh, the thing I'm really worried about is that because of these vibration issues, I'm not sure how that's going to affect the rest of the flight performance and uh, yeah, it, uh, it could just shake itself to pieces in the sky. This is the exciting but nerve-wracking part of DIY aerospace engineering. There are always hundreds of things that can go wrong and unlucky enough for me, I was just about to discover one I didn't expect whatsoever. Ah! It's quite difficult to launch this. I turned the engine off. I think I think it's all right. I accidentally knocked the EDF kill switch, uh, and that just meant we lost all of our forward thrust. Nothing's broken by the looks of it. So it was time for another attempt. Uh, come on, I thought that was going to work that time. This time it was close. We were definitely generating more lift, but it still wasn't quite enough to offset the mass of the new powered rotor system. It's not making enough lift. Um, from the wing, but we can't rotate the wing much faster. So, um, yeah. Oh no, we hit the molehill. Oh no. Oh, more mud. <laughs> Just wiped my aeroplane on the grass. <laughs> right, we've got a lot of, a lot of uh, thinking to do about which direction we're gonna take this thing. I think we might end up just taking it back to basics based on uh, that slightly failed experiment. We hadn't successfully increased the lift enough to offset the extra weight. This was a massive setback. Oh, <laughs> After all this work, we still hadn't achieved a proper balance of the four forces of flight. It was all starting to get a bit frustrating. Not really sure what I'm gonna do. Did we really have to just go and start all over again? Or could we fix all of this another way? Now, as you might imagine, all of these projects on Project Air take a lot of organization to pull off. And if you're wondering how I've organized this project, I actually used Odoo, who are sponsoring this video with an ad. Odoo is an all-in-one management software that provides users with all sorts of tools for running their businesses, including invoicing, accounting, project management, inventory, website creation, and much more. And you can get one app for free with unlimited hosting and support. I've been using this one for the last couple of months, which is the Project app, which is appropriately the Project app for Project Air. And this has let me get a really clear view of all of the steps of my current project that I'm currently working on. And for more complicated projects, I can break them down into subtasks and all of that sort of thing. You can also collaborate in real time and share your work with internal and external users. Again, you can get one app for life for free or you can get all of the apps starting at 19 euros 90 per month if you want to check odoo out then click the link in the description and uh, yeah see if it will help you with your own projects right talking of that i'm going to get on with mine The main problem with our prototype plane was it didn't have enough lift to comfortably stay in the air, especially with the relatively heavy electronics we've now fitted. This was all because the wing couldn't create enough lift needed to offset the aircraft's weight. The plan had always been to scale up the design, but suddenly I realized scaling up was exactly what we needed to get more lift out of this aircraft, thanks to this formula. When you double the wing area of an aircraft, the lift doesn't just double, it actually quadruples. So if we scaled the plane up to be twice its current size, we could theoretically get four times the lift. With this new breakthrough, we got to work building a new plane, one that would be twice the size of our prototype, three meters long by 3.4 meters. It was going to be impressive. So this bit goes on there. Emma's been putting together the fuselage and everything. If we could keep the weight relatively low, we should get a much better lift to weight ratio. 1.5 kilograms at the moment. Really? 
Yeah. Since we were aiming to build the largest RC Magnus Effect aircraft in the world, I decided this aircraft needed a bit of extra decoration. So we added a few windows along the side for the imaginary brave passengers for this inaugural test flight. And of course, I added my Patreon's names to the tail, as always. If you want your name to ride along on future builds, make sure to check out my Patreon and sign up with the link in the description box below. After a couple of weeks of hard work, the new aircraft was ready for its first test flight. It was very exciting to see it finally roll out of the hangar. Ta-da! It's done! Right, let's get it back in. <laughs> it's raining. <laughs> Before we could launch it on its big mission, we needed to do a few shakedown runs on the concrete test strip outside the workshop. So there are some big changes uh, on this plane over the prototype. So first of all, freewheeling wings. So we've done away with our powered rotors um, uh, without any complicated mechanism in here in the fuselage. Now we've just got these freewheeling, which is a lot simpler. We've also moved the electric ducted fans from the rear of the aircraft to the front, and that has several advantages. The first being that primarily, these are now out of the turbulent air of the rotary wings. Secondly, they also create a bit of artificial lift. So now these are blowing the rotary wings around. And then the main thing with this whole new aeroplane is that it's got a relatively lower wing loading now. The plan was to start with a few high-speed runs on the concrete, get a feel for the larger aircraft, and then take it to the flying field. Okay, you ready? Okay, contact. <laughs> Okay. It's working really quite nicely. I mean, it's not flying yet, but we, we don't want it to fly yet. But it's starting to get up. It's starting to pull up, so that's good. That's a good sign. It was all about taking it slow and steady, making small adjustments to the control surfaces and fixing little issues as they cropped up. Try again. Of course, though, it wasn't all smooth sailing. Right, I'm going to start her up, and then we're going to go for a little hop and see what happens. Okay, that's, uh, <laughs> that didn't go as, it, as planned. <laughs> Let's get it back into the hangar. I think we might need to do a bit more work on this thing. Bit by bit, we were getting there. Well, that was a hop. <laughs> we might still need some more power to make sure that the plane could get off the ground properly. But if we could manage these small test hops, it was a very good sign. The world's largest RC Magnus Effect aircraft was now flying, just about. Well, that was a flight. <laughs> right, the plane is almost ready for its first proper mission to see if we can achieve a successful flight. It's still needing a little bit more power, so I've been upgrading the power system to give it just a little more thrust to be comfortable. Starting small, we've overcome each challenge one by one, and now we have the world's largest RC Magnus Effect plane ready for action. Proof that with some hard work and perseverance, you can push your own boundaries and achieve something really quite impressive. Finally, I think we've We've got all four forces of flight fully balanced now. But obviously, anything can happen on a test flight, and success is never really guaranteed with these things. If this all goes well, then hopefully, this will be the next video on Project Air where we'll officially validate this aircraft as the largest Magnus Effect RC plane in the world. I'm building loads of interesting aeroplanes at the moment and have lots of interesting, cool videos coming out over the next couple of months. It would be amazing if we could try to grow the channel towards a million subscribers over the next year. So make sure to subscribe to the channel down below and yeah, hopefully we'll hit that target. While you wait for the next video to come out, here's another one that I think you'll enjoy too, if you've enjoyed this one. And um, yeah, click on this one next and I'll see you on that one. <laughs>